Hi, everyone. We're going to get started in just one minute. So good to see all of your faces. All right. We're just going to wait one more minute and then we'll go ahead and get started. And while you're doing that, if you just want to make sure that you're on mute, we're going to um, just have us all on mute in the beginning. And then at the end of the session, we'll go ahead and have a collaborative kind of talk and you can go off of mute. Perfect. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, just a tip, I don't know if anybody else needs it, but I use speaker view and that can enlarge the person who's talking. Um, and then once the slides are on, you can go ahead and drag down that speaker and enlarge them if you wanna see them. So just putting that out there if anybody needs it. Thank you all for coming and joining in week four. I can't believe it's week four already. It's crazy to me. Uh, I'm just gonna share my screen real quick to get these slides up here. Uh, we've had so much fun just discussing throughout these past weeks with you all. It's been really enlightening to me to hear everybody's thoughts and viewpoints on you know their writing and their writing process. And I really took inspiration from all of you last week and this week, I kind of wanted to do something that got me out of my head. I know we talked about hiking last week and talked about, you know, daydreaming. And so I did something different. And this week, I built a deck, <laughs> which was a great experience. You know, I built a deck. And if those of you probably don't know, I'm also an improviser. So this week, I also did some Zoom improv sessions. And both of them really just got me way out of my head. Um, in two very different ways. When I was building the deck, I was able to, you know, really focus on what I was doing with my hands and it allowed me to have those daydreams and um, really kind of inspire me to the next step. And improv, you're just completely in the moment getting that passion and, you know, seeing what you can do with those people and what to do from the next moment. And so that really excited me and drove my passion into my writing for this week. So all in all, it was a great week and I hope you had a great week as well. Um, moving into this session, we're gonna be focusing a lot on mind mapping and looking at how you can mind map your way into your next story. So one of the things we just wanted to mention at the top is if you have a piece of paper and something to write with, ideally it would be colored pencils, but no worries if you do not have colored pencils, a pen can work just as well. Um, so if you just wanna take a moment to get those pen and pencils or paper and pencils, that'd be perfect because we will be using those later on. Awesome. And also we wanted to mention too that this week we will be looking at um, the Indo review. We have the Sunday Independent um, Travel News column Kev has every week. Um, he does a memory section and we'll be talking more about that because we really wanted to put this option out there for people to submit their own memories for a chance to get published in that independent review. Um, so just wanted to put that idea out there. We're gonna talk about it a little more later on. Um, but first, we really wanna get into this mind mapping and Kevin has been using this over his 30 year career. And obviously it's been really working for him. So I am eager to hear how that process goes. Um, so Kev, it is all yours. Well, great. It's, it's, it's fantastic to see you. Thanks, Emma, for all the work you've done. I think we have a very exciting session tonight. And when it comes to the, um, the Sunday Independent, I have a weekly column. And last week, one of the participants, Ben, uh, actually had a piece published. So we have 700,000 readers, which is great. Um, so I will uh, go through the details of that. Can, I, can everybody see me and hear me okay? Is that all good? 
Great. Okay. So what I wanted to do today was I'll come back to those. Um, and, I, and I'm going to encourage you, every one of you, to, to, to write up. And we're going to hold your hand and take you through the process of writing up about your best travel memory. And then what we're going to do is anybody who, who submits it, and if it's good enough, I'll publish it in the paper. Which is the great thing about being editor. You can decide who, who you know, if, if the story is good enough, uh, it will go in. So let's see if we can have that as one of the goals for this. Um, and I'd be delighted if any one of you could do that. So let's start off with the slides, and um, Emma's done a great job again, put it, everything together. So we'll look at our first slide, and we're going to have a very quick recap. So slide, the next slide is going to show us what we did um, last week. Now I know there's actually a couple of new faces here, which is great. And, uh, and what, what, the, the real thing about this course is a thing called expressive writing. And what's great about expressive writing? Well, the great thing about expressive writing is that it, uh, it, it, it doesn't need to have good grammar. It doesn't need to have uh, proper spelling. All it needs is for you to have um, a pen, a piece of paper, and to just uh, Go through and share what uh, what you what you you what what's inside of you already there. What's already there, and uh, and it's a fantastic tool for unblocking yourself. It's a sort of a, a free um, a, a expression of how you really feel, and it can really help with some of those sort of blocked areas. So, um, is it possible to go to one of the next slides? Em, are we good? Yeah. Can you see the my screen? Yes, yes. Perfect. So we should be on finding what's right for you. I can only see the first slide. Oh, really let me try that again. Sorry, everyone. Let me um, try sharing that again one more time. I'm just seeing the original sort of placeholder slide. Okay. Can you see my screen now with finding? Yes. Right if we go back once, if we go back one slide, I think we're there. If we go back one, okay. So expressive writing is, as we say, very very simple and uh, very easy to do. So we go to the next slide now. And for anybody who's new, I see a couple of new faces there, which is great, and you're really really welcome. We want people to drop in because we're just sharing as a writer of thirty years and two books and documentaries and you know, quite a lot of stuff in a weekly column. I, I really find it's, uh, it, it, it's beautiful to share. And uh, each week we can share stuff. So it doesn't matter if you've missed out on stuff, but just to bring you up to speed, what we're really encouraging people to do is journal, uh, you know, a gratitude diary. And you can put so much into that. Um, I have mine right next to me here. Um, you know, and every day I have a different a different entry. Uh, this is very exciting, the, 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 the drawing therapy. I'm going to cover that next week. That unlocks a lot of stuff. And each day you can have a, a gratitude note and maybe a small observation on life. And uh, we'll talk about that as we go along. But, but I think the diary becomes your best friend. And then you'll look back at when lockdown hopefully is like a far distant memory and you'll go, wow, I have something that really reminds me of that, which is great. Okay, let's go to the next slide. And you know, what do you have to pay for this? 20 minutes a day. That's all it takes. Um, 20 minutes of, un it's your 20 minutes uninterrupted. Uh, mental hygiene, it's like brushing your teeth, you know, and uh, it, it's fantastic. If you can do this for 20 minutes a day, already I'm seeing profound uh, impact. It's interesting that Claire and Niall um, are both working. So you can see that slowly, we're going back to work. People are slowly, you know, they, you know, they're, they're, they're finding that, you know, a couple of people actually on this course are, are, are back working, and uh, and 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 uh, they're sorry they can't make it, and we definitely miss their company, but they will be able to pick up on YouTube. But this whole session will be is recorded, um, and same with Phil actually, she's got something on, uh, and so it's work related, so it's difficult to 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 always but that's the great thing about youtube you'll be able to catch up so that's 20 minutes a day with no interruptions and that's where the magic happens and uh and i really love what niall said about that 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 even though you may be clicking your sitting there you know twiddling your thumbs and 
getting agitated, but even just being there, that's where that allows daydreaming, the science of daydreaming, which has been killed by the mobile phone. And that means that you can dream and stuff comes. Okay, next. And we've talked about our critic and how, how much I've gained from you know, doing the, the research uh, uh, on this long relationship I've had with my own critic, but it's been so fantastic to make up slides and to, to do it. And, 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 and my own inner critic uh, piece, which we've shared, um, it, 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 I look at that every day before I sit down to write and look, listen to all the voices that say, well, nobody was interested. And uh, it really helps just to be aware that that's the voice that's going on inside. And it's been profoundly helpful for me. So doing this course, Emma and me do it out of the love of it. And if anybody wants to make a donation, they can give it to the homeless charity at the end. But we do it because it's so productive. And uh, even if I was just doing it for myself, it would be productive. But it's great to share. So next slide. And we're, last week, we talked about making everything a ritual. So trying to find a time every week where you can you know, have your coffee, sit down, you've got your writing corner. And um, if you want to find out more about that, last week's tape was great, but it, it really helps if you can make it a habit and a ritual. And it soon, it's like going for a walk, going for a run, uh, doing a yoga class. It's soon how strong you suddenly become. You know, during the lockdown, I've gone back to serious running and you know, the change in my shape and the change in my energy is, is incredible. So it, it really does work if you can make a ritual and a habit. Next. And those five steps, just to recall, uh, our last recall. So when you're going to find your writing, whether that's first thing in the morning, last thing at night, middle of the day, afternoon, set the alarm, try to get a bell sounding so you know you're starting. And we're going to do the inner critic tape. That tape is actually up on the website now. It's free for you to use. Um, and we're going to go, we're going to step, we're going to walk you through a, a three or four minute little inner critic meditation before we do our little work on the memory. Um, then we do a draw a pick, write your journal entry and uh, set the clock and sit down for 20 minutes. That's it. It's pretty simple. It just needs the discipline, the habit and the ritual. Next. So the big one tonight is mind mapping. And I think you'll probably find this possibly one of the most useful things. I've certainly found it the most useful things in my sort of career. Um, it's the science behind this is absolutely powerful. Um, there's no doubt that this helps with all different parts of the brain. It is the most eloquent work, way to work, as I'm going to show as we go through this slide. Exercise together uh, experientially. So you'll know what we're doing by the end of this. It's not me chatting and yabbering on, but we'll, we'll find this all together. And it works. The ma amazing thing is it works in the same way as the brain. And uh, I think that's what's, what, what's so fantastic about it. It, it. It's a really, really, really powerful tool. And you'll use it in all different ways. So let's look at the, and it starts off as, with a simple cell. And it, as you can see, it's sort of organic, the shape of a mind map. It starts with a single cell, a bit like human life. It goes to two cells, four cells. Let's have a look at the next tape. And this is a fully fledged mind map. It can be about anything. This one is about mind mapping. As you can see, there's branches going from the center. The branches ideally are in different colors, and that really makes it jump out at you. Um, you, can, you can use this if you're doing a business meeting. You can do this as your day. What am I going to do with my day in lockdown, semi-lockdown, as it now is starting to become? Uh, what am I going to do for my writing this morning? What am I going to do for my summer holiday? It, it, it could, anything. I use mind mapping for everything and everything and the science means you will be more effective it's powerful um, try to use one word as you can see that green line is just benefits and then you can put a little picture or collaboration line below one word one little pick if you need a pick or a pick and no word but keep it simple you want to be able to read this at a glance and and the, 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 as you'll find the temptation is to over start writing sentences just get the discipline, do this right, use different colors, one word, one drawing, and you'll see it at a, at, a, at a glance. Next. Here's one way. You can also get these online mind maps. I'm not big into that, as you know. I believe in using the pen, is mightier than the sword, a big exponent of that. But you can use them. I and mean, look how help, helpful it can be for something like a holiday. 
located? How's your transport going to work? Have I got my checklist before I leave? What are we going to do when we get there? You know, it could be, it could be any subject and you can use it. Uh, you can get these little packages. Um, but again, nothing beats the pen for me. Next. And what can you use this for? Anything like visualizing. This is some of the hard studies have shown that it's great for visualizing, great for organizing. The best way of note taking ever devised. In fact, if you think about looking at long lines of cursive writing and trying to remember that, that's why it's a revolutionized study because you can actually see at a glance the notes that you're taking. Problem solving, start off and put your problem in the middle and see what happens. It's brilliant. You can see solutions appear out of nowhere. Uh, decision making, I've got to leave this job. What's, what, what's my pros? What's my cons? Mind map it. Clarifying ideas. It's really, it will really show you, oh yeah, I didn't think of that. Oh, no, I'm not sure about that. And then brainstorming. It is the ultimate brainstorming topic. So let's go on and before we actually dive down and do a mind map uh, together of our best holiday. So have your pen and paper handy. Um, if you've got three or four colored pencils, so much the better. If you've only got one pencil, that's fine, but you can, you can, you can use it for next time. It does help having different colors, but sometimes you won't have the time for that. So it always starts off with the central idea. Next page, next, next slide. So today, for example, I always start off with, what am I going to write today? As you can see, it's a blank sheet of paper. It's suddenly less terrifying because there's something right in the middle. So what am I going to write today? I have no idea. Next slide. Then you start allowing the branches, arrows, uh, different colors to come out. This one key word, one image to start on that blank sheet. Next, next slide. And then you can see, I've just given you a very simple example here, the key word above, and I was looking at a word, off word. Uh, this one is about the critic, and this is a little pen image uh, of me being stabbed as a kid by my critic. Um, it, it doesn't matter, nobody's gonna see these. So you don't have to uh, beat yourself up that it looks naff or it looks terrible. Um, it doesn't, it, 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 it really makes the whole brain buzz when you use these images and these words. Next slide. And here is, you can see the four different colors that I've used here and um, four little images and four words. And it's a very simple, eloquent way, but you'll find your own way. So don't, that, that's just one template. And now we're actually gonna dig down. But I thought I'd show you a little bit about how I actually, how important this is for me. So let's look at the next slide. Um, which we're going to do of our holiday memory and we're going to do i'm just going to show you how to fill this in very very briefly now so if you get your pen and paper and you start off with a blank sheet and we're going to start off by putting i'm going to give you the branches for this one and then we're going to take a moment together to fill them in um, so it's very simple don't worry about if it looks clean or it looks uh, sophisticated that's not the point so the next slide shows us that the subject for this is my best holiday memory. So all I want you to do is draw a circle. I have my little colored pens, uh, it costs a euro, a dollar, and very cheap. Um, and you just, that starts off. So we're all gonna do the same mind map together to see if we can come up with a story we can get published. Uh, so let's have a go at it. Doesn't matter if it works, doesn't matter if it doesn't work. At least you'll know how to do a mind map at the end. So take a moment, write down best holiday memory, and we go to the next slide. I want you to do two branches. I don't want you to fill anything in yet. Just the first, the top one is the date. So a branch going up, and you can make them, I, I, they, 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 they say it's better to make them curved, like organic, uh, not hard and sharp. And just put date in one. And if you have a different color, you can use the, the there's gonna be five, so you can almost use it, break this up into five different places. The venue or the location, whichever word works best for you. Venue, put down venue. And again, just take your time. The next one is your company, who you went with on this best holiday. 
don't fill it in yet, just make the mind map ready so we can go, as soon as we've done our little meditation, we can go into this and you can experiment for yourself. Uh, and you're going to have, you're going to relive your holiday. Well, that's great. You can have a five minute reliving, free holiday, free cruise. How great is that? And the next branch is the purpose. That's not very clear there because my blue pen was sort of running out of the um, uh, steam, but not to worry about that. So that's the purpose. What was the point of this holiday? Was there a particular purpose to it? And the next one, the final one is the best memory. So on the, the, the top one, just put in best memory or memory, if you're going to keep to one word. And we do like keeping to one word. So you should have, by the end of this, date, venue, company, purpose, and memory. And that's all we need. And then uh, I'm going to show you examples of how I use my maps every day, all day long. Here's a diary ent entry. You can see the date, the 12th of the 4th. I start off with a little drawing, which will be going into drawing therapy next week, which is incredible. And I just, just it, I don't say gratitude anymore. I actually draw a little drawing of what I did. Went on a picnic with the grandkids, did some writing, saw a great show, whatever it is. And that's in the diary. It's in this diary every single day. I, I have a mind map and a drawing. Next. Uh, this is the last chapter of the book I'm writing currently. And, you know, look, look what I did. I just took, uh, you know, th th there's a lot to be said for starting at the end. Uh, some writers do it the opposite way. Uh, but I always like to start at the end. And I've just basically outlined um, very rough terms, a bit of imagery and a little bit of text. And it gives me an overview as, well, does that work? What am I missing? Is that dramatic enough to end a book? And it's a fantastic tool and I can just tear it up. I, I, what is fantastic about this is you, you, you won't waste, you know, a morning of writing about, you know, he went to this park and he did this. You go, oh, and that doesn't really work. When you have a mind map like this, you'll see at a glance, oh, wow, well, that's not right. Oh my goodness me, yeah, that's spot on. Okay, next. Here's another couple of chapters. Again, you know, just taken out of the book pretty much at random. I just took a photo just to share with you, to show you how I do it. You see, it's not for publication. It's really, it's just to get your brain going. And I couldn't work now without this. It is so productive and eloquent. And next. Now, please remember, it's not a work of art. Don't get caught up in fancy this and fancy that. Just allow your mind to go and you, all the benefits are there they're all scientifically uh, it's very profound how helpful this will be so really you know use it for whatever you want to do it will help you it will be a great tool and next so what i want to do is i want us to go back and we're going to start filling in the blanks but next tape will show us before we fill in the blanks let's start off and let's do our meditation tape now you can get i'm going to take you through this uh just myself now for five minutes like we did last week you can get this little inner critic tape uh, to help you write um on the website it's free use it uh, as much as you want and and i always start off my session by actually doing this and i find it really really helpful so let's let's start off so just put your pen down make yourself comfortable and uh let's have um Let's just get a sense of where, where we're at right now before we go into this memory. And this is a tape particularly to do with getting you ready to write. So what we have the mind map in our, in our head, which is very easy to remember, the best travel memory. And as you go through this very, very short piece, just allow any memories to come back to you. And you may be surprised what comes. But all I want you to do first is just to get your feet on the ground and just notice how they feel, how much space they take up. What? What? You can close your eyes if that helps. You can actually um, 
you can actually get a sense of yes I'm, 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 I'm actually very relaxed here now I can really feel the feet under I can really feel I can really feel underneath my feet the, the ground and then just notice how your feet feel are they um, are they feeling tight do they need to walk what are they trying to tell you is there any memory that comes of a holiday when you think of your feet when you feel your feet sand water skiing who knows just open yourself up to possibilities and then very very gently come up to the legs so from the ankle up to your knee and up to your hip and just notice how much space your legs take up just right now you can move them around you can lock them together and just again notice how your legs feel right now and also is there a memory that comes is there any memory that comes as you pay attention to your legs and is and what do they need to tell you are they telling you into your abdomen and your stomach and that whole area there and notice how does that feel right now that whole area of my abdomen from my heart all the way down to the tip of my coccyx the end of my spine this is where the body's second brain the gut and all the science says this is this is a, another whole form of intelligence just notice does anything come don't force it nothing has to come you're taking your time here just to notice is anything getting in the way is anything telling me ah oh, you're wasting your time just notice that and, and 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 give that thought a holiday if you are getting an inner critic any words from your inner critic that are, are, are somehow harsh you can always just say okay i hear that i'm just gonna put him out there on a little boat or on a little hot air balloon and just allow them to have a rest while I continue this search. And then just notice, does anything come in the gut as regards something that you've done in the past, a place you've been, something wonderful that you have. And again, just open yourself up to a memory and it may surprise you. You may have started off with one memory and now you suddenly go, whoa, actually, that's interesting. So don't edit, just allow your body to gift you. And then you come up to your heart, you can put your hand on your heart if that helps, just to notice how it's beating for you, how much space it takes up. Take a deep breath into your lungs and notice that. Mmm, your lungs fill. And again, just notice how that feels there. And then open yourself up to memories. Just follow the breath in and out. Nothing more, nothing less. A final deep breath. And then just notice your shoulders, and how they are, and your neck and your head. You can move it around if you so wish. Notice, are you carrying anything in your shoulders? Is that telling you anything? Again, take your time just to notice. And finally, your head. You can move your lips, move your chin around, stick out your tongue, place it on behind your teeth, above your teeth. <laughs> Roll the lips. <laughs> Open them or close the eyes, whatever, whatever feels right, and just feel your whole the size of your brain. Just see if you can just notice how big your brain is, how much space it takes, and what's it preoccupied with right now. What's it telling you? And this could be a place where you get critical thoughts. And if you do, again, don't try to do anything other than gently put them on a cushion beside you or place them somewhere very soft and gentle. And finally, just get a stretch. You, if you want to stretch, you can stretch. And again, just notice what comes to you at the pit of your stomach. What is, what does your body give you when it comes to thinking about your best memory what does your body give you just check and see
if anything comes. And now, just take a moment to open up your eyes slowly. Take four breaths to get back into the flow of things. Ah. Ah. Just blink your eyes. And when you're ready, just pick up a pen and get your mind mat, which has the branches read, ready. And we're going to just take a moment to start filling it in. And I want to give you a minute on each of these so you can take your time. And remember, um, you can also uh, change your mind. You know, that's a great thing about a mind map. You can change your mind. So we go to the next slide. And let's start at the top with date. So if you've actually located your, a memorable holiday, one you're going to talk about now, it doesn't have to be the definitive one then very gently put in, what year did this happen? Maybe you do a drawing of the venue, if, if that helps you, a sketch, something small, stick figures, or just the date. Then take your time and come down to the venue, the location, where was this holiday? What part of the world? We know what season it was because of the date, so where, where, where were you for this holiday? And then when you've had a moment to do that, who were you with? Take a moment to check that out. Who was your company? Or were you on your own? You may well have been on your own, you know, it, 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 your own company. And again, take your time with that. And then was there a purpose? Was this pure vacation? Was this pure enjoyment? Was this a break after a big time at work? Was this to learn a new skill, scuba diving, or skiing, or yoga? What was the purpose? If any, it doesn't have to be a purpose. And again, you can doodle. And if you do doodle, use a different color if you have them available. And then we go to the very top, the last one. What was the best memory? What was it about it? What is there one thing, one day, one time, one location that really stuck out for you? And again, just jot it down. And then just take a moment to just look back and say, okay, yeah, 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 I'm happy with that one. You can leave a bank skate so you could always put down at the bottom, you know, you've maybe two or three alternatives and you could just put them a little mind back at the bottom of the page and just put alternatives in them, three branches. Say it was that winter break or that city break or a winter break, a city break, and a cruise, or a winter break, a city break, an adventure, or a family reunion, or a friend's reunion, a school, whatever. Just take a moment to, to put down any alternatives, and you can always come back to them. So i just give you a few more seconds, another minute, just to wrap everything up, so you have a real sense of it. And, and what we're going to do now is, once you finish this, I'm going to give everybody the opportunity to, to, to ask a few questions, to come online and to share uh, their experience of doing the mind map. And then I'll be able to sort of refine if there's any, you know, oh, should I do this? Should I do that? Hopefully I'll be able to answer any questions you have and maybe you'd like to share. It's always, this is a great opportunity to share. And uh, I can help you again if you, if you want to enter the competition to be published in the paper that I edit, uh, the travel section, then, um, Ask questions. So I think, is that my last tape? Yes, uh, this is just a recap. Um, you know, both sides of the brain gets you started when you're writing. It's a brilliant way to start off with if you've got a blank sheet of paper, just draw a mind map. What am I going to write? And it, it stops this huge revision and, and, and you, 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 you go down a blind alley and you write five pages. So just make it, That's not right. Um, and you see your idea literally take shapes. I cannot 
recommend this process any higher than anything I've taught on this course. It, it gets my number one. Okay, so next week, something almost as good, drawing therapy. And it actually, it's yeah, no, no, nearly as good. Uh, this is going to be very exciting next week, and we're going to do a real little process. And if you marry up the writing with the mind mapping, you will come up with some great stuff. Okay, so let's go to our questions. Emma, did you want to say anything there? Yeah, of course. Um, I'm just going to let this stop sharing, and then whenever you come on with your interaction, just make sure you're off of mute. I have done this a few times where I start talking a lot and I'm not off of mute. So just make sure your mute button is off and then you'll be good to go. New York, and would you like to unmute and share a little bit about what you were doing, uh, where you were? Yes, hi. Um, what I was doing with the mind map, yeah, so if, again, use this opportunity if you have any doubts or questions about the mind map or how or where or what for, uh, uh, and then share a bit about your, your holiday if you, if you so wish. Absolutely. So I think I maybe went down the path of writing a few more than one word, and that's my proneness. So probably how would you, when you said memory, I actually put it in writing as well as did a yeah, no, you can do it. as long as I, I think the thing with mind mapping, and I'm really bad at this, as you can see from some of my mind maps there, uh, it really helps if you stick to one word or mm -hmm. one image or both. But if right. you start writing sentences, it becomes a jumble and you won't get that clarity. When you look back at the page, see, even this, this is my critic. You know, I, 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 I've used, I've, the critic was quite complex. Um, yeah. And, and, and you'll get into your own style. Here's another mind. I'm just picking these up literally at um, random. You get into your own way of doing it, you know, and I'm doing this for a book. Um, this one is, that's a fairly classic mind map there. This is, this is about the book. This is, uh, you know, I'm, I was trying to work out what is this book actually going to be about. And it was really, it really gave me clarity to, to, to you know, and it changed. Like there's, there's a whole... There's, there's sheets of them on the bed, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and, and you know, you, the idea develops. The great thing is it's at a glance. You see it, it's there, and you can just mm -hmm. in, out, or whatever. Great. I, and I can see applying it to other things beyond, beyond this writing, which is very exciting. So I started off with one memory in mind, and I was actually finding it hard to pick a memory. And then I, I, we did that meditation, and it shifted to a different memory. So that was interesting. And um, I don't know what else you'd like me to share. Um, do you want me to share a little bit about what it was? Uh, only if you want to, but I okay. think what, what the point of the whole, of the meditation tape is to get you out of your head. So yeah. the meditation tape grounds you. It gets you mm -hmm. in touch with this body brain. And the whole point of the meditation tape is, is, is what you thought, oh, I should think about this trip with my husband. You know, I, 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 obviously it has to be my husband or my son. Well, actually, mm -hmm. then it comes around. You give yourself a chance. It was nothing to do with that person. Mm -hmm. That's what you, we think, oh, I should definitely write about this. We have these preconceptions. And what's great about mind mapping is it allows you and the meditation steps, which is grounding you. Yes. Well, and the, the grounding was good because all morning I've had different, the critic about other things. So this actually, that meditation was the first time today, um, even being out in the park, it was the first time that I was able to stop the chatter. And those, that chatter is, tends to be negative versus, you know, go and you're doing a great job there in lockdown. It's not usually that kind of <laughs> conversation. So this was great. This was actually a nice reprieve. And then it had me pick the memory. It was actually a memory of being in Paris. And uh, when you came and visited me after I had been working there. So that was, it was nice. So while you were still at the Sorbonne? No, this was afterwards when I was working and then you flew over and uh, I had flown from the States and so, okay. Okay. yeah, okay. it was a nice and memory. Very, very, and I had a very posh job at the Sorbonne. She was a very, uh, very intelligent person. Um, okay, as, as everybody, <laughs> obviously. Exactly. Um, okay, so great. Well, listen, yeah, yeah, we'll keep going with that. That's great. So thanks thank for you. that. 
Um, Laura, what's, what, how did it work for you today? I love your, um, your top. Uh, it's very colourful. That's what we like. Colour. Thank you. I do love colour. <laughs> it is my thing. Um, with the mind mapping, I found that really helpful because I tend to have too many ideas yes. all the time. So for me, mind mapping, I, I've been looking at mind mapping separately and wondering how it works. But I think I still have to get a grip on mind mapping because even with mind mapping, my mind is still running away and thinking of 20 things at one time. But um, once I think I get a grasp on exactly how to, you know, harness um, one idea and stick with that, then, then it might make things easier for me, you know. But like, let's say for right, we did a holiday today, but all my thoughts are so rolling around so much that uh, sometimes it can be hard to pinpoint one thing to even mind map, if that makes sense. Yeah, but I think what, what, I think what would be great, Maura, is that the problem you know, the, the, the challenge there is not the mind mapping, it's that I have so many things I could talk about. Yeah. <laughs> and what, so, so, so it's just the discipline. And, you know, it goes back to that whole thing. That's great. I have a hundred things to talk about. Great. Yeah. No problem. We are going to pick one. And we will come back and spend the whole night going through all the 99 others. But for now, I am picking one, and I am really saying this in acting, that you commit to the line, okay? You pick a lane, and you go for it. That would be a great discipline, particularly yeah. if you find you're often challenged by having loads of things to do. It would be a great discipline to just say, okay, come back to that, do a separate mind map of all the hundreds of other things I can do, but I am picking the lane, and I am going for this. Well, already at the start of quarantine, I did a mind map of all the things I wanted to do while in quarantine. And it's actually worked quite well for me. But there was about 50 things on this piece of paper of hobbies and different things I wanted to do. But it definitely helps. But for me, when it comes to writing, yeah, I think I, think I just have to you know, get more disciplined, definitely. But I think mind mapping, just learning the art of mind mapping itself, it's something that I have to kind of... I guess tighten and, and, and remember, just I'm, 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 I'm anxious. I get nervous when I, when I hear someone say, just le when I've learned that, it's a bit like when I've learned to meditate, it, everything will be all right. That's, I, I, I throw that in the bin, actually. I would say, mind mapping is as simple that a child could do. You know how to mind map. You don't have to learn how to mind map. What you do, all, you to to learn, all you have to learn to do is to stick with one thing. That's yeah. all. And that's the trick. It's not like it's out there. It's never out there. It's here, right now, on that piece of paper. And just having, just being confident with that. Does that make sense? No, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. So, so, so never. It, 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 it it's, it's a sort of a, it's a sort of an inner critic trick to say, well, once I, once I got, you know, John Cabotson talks a lot to this with meditators. He says, you know, um, you know, oh, well, once we meditate. Elysium. It's mm -hmm. now. So what you have now is, is all you have and it's enough. It's enough. Mm -hmm. so, so don't worry about getting mind mapping right or once I get it, there's no once. It's now. Yeah. Okay. And, 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 <laughs> and, and, that, and, and, you know, once you get into that flow of thing, just doing one thing now, one thing, that's the danger and the, the, the evil of multitasking because it dilutes us, you know, and that's the whole evil of, you know, of, of being completely distracted by social media is the research now is terrifying that we're becoming completely fragmented. We can't daydream anymore. We can't, you know, because there's so many pings all going off to this baby part of our brain where we have to respond. And, and that's, not, that's not helpful if you want to. My problem is I daydream too much, but uh, I think my problem that I've also found with the writing is I start off with one topic and then I end up going back and writing about the same topic that I've written, like I've been going back to the pages. I'm like, God, I wrote about that three times this week. You know, why am I keep going back to that, move on, you know? Yeah, yeah, maybe. But again, you know, if you use the real discipline and I, and I use this, you know, like today when I was writing, um, in a different, it's in a different book, but I, I was writing a chapter today and I can go off exactly like that. So I did a mind map and I had one word 
for each topic I was going to, to do, and, and I stuck to it. It's discipline. You know, it really is a case of saying, you know, I can do that later on tonight. I'll write about all that other stuff. It's not that you're saying I'll never do that. That's the trick is to tell the critic, you know, who's saying, well, you have to do everything. Sounds could be a critic, but you know, whatever. Yeah, that's, that's my mind. You have to do everything. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. that's fine. Well, I'll do everything, but for that, I'm just going to do this now. Is that okay? You know, just, just give me, I'm just going to do this for 20 minutes. Okay. Even the critic will probably back off if you, if you throw him that bit of meat. So good luck. I'm looking forward to hearing yeah, how that goes. I'm looking forward to hearing the holiday. Uh, just give us a taste of the location if you found one. Or um, one. Actually, I, I had one. And then when I was doing the meditation, I switched to another one. But I really enjoyed the memory that had cropped up. So I went back to my original one, which was when we went sailing on, um, around the Croatian islands about eight years ago. Uh, eight of my close friends. And wow. it was just a, an incredible holiday. So yeah, gracious and amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. Great. Okay. Well done, Mark. Um, Josephine, tell me a little bit about how you got on, if you want to unmute. Hi. How are you? Welcome. Thank yeah. Welcome. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. Just um, tell us where you are. Connecticut. Okay. Okay. How is it in Connecticut? How, how is the weather? How, how is life in Connecticut? Life in Connecticut is good. I'm working from home, um, and I spoke with Anne earlier today. Uh, and, and I, she mentioned this, you know, that she was participating in this and she said about writing and I'm going to share it with you. I don't know everyone here, but I'll just be vulnerable and put this out there. And I said, you know, this morning when I sat down at my desk, I was doing something and it popped into my mind. I had a dream of and it's not this has been something i've thought about reminding me about my dream or my thought of i was trying to figure out a process to write honest to god i told <laughs> Isn't that great when she told me she was doing this and i was floored i said you're not going to believe this you're going to think i'm making this up and she said you have to join you have to join yes. so that's well, why well. i'm here but I mean, I think that's the case of, you know, well, hopefully you're finding, hopefully you found that useful. And, this is um, so interesting. Yes. Yeah, it is interesting. It really is interesting. No, it really, really is. And, and, and I think you've just given us a very good example of, you know, uh, uh, you know the universe actually does give us uh, what we need, you know, when, uh, if, you know, if we listen. I believe that, yes. So um, anything else? very well. Okay, so anything else you wanted to ask about mind mapping or share as regards the holiday? Well, you shared a great thing there, so, so don't feel any pressure, but that was a great contribution. Thank you. Um, uh, I like this. I can use the organization in my thoughts, and so this helps. And even though my first idea, well, you said holiday, and holiday to me is... Christmas and New Year's, and then I said, oh, vacation holiday. Okay. So that's okay, but it could be both, you know, different. Yeah. I came up with um, a couple of different alternatives, as you said. So I mapped one, but I have a few alternatives, just bullet it at the bottom. Yeah. I think it's a great way to organize my thoughts. Yes, it is. And, and you just have to, and it will also, as Maura, very, you know, you know, showed that, that, you know, it will also show you where your thoughts need organizing. You know, that's the yeah. great thing. You'll actually see it's, it will guide you just in the way you were guided to do a writing course, you know, it, you know, that, 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 that your, your own process will guide you, you even if it's critical and it's chaotic, it's out of the chaos. That this wonderful stuff happens as we'll find out next week when we do our, our little, uh, our little drawing thing, which is, quite profound as well thank you great one location before you go on where 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 you were one of your best locations key west florida key west florida and one of your locations so we can get one location from each person uh paris paris great uh okay so uh karen would you like to unmute sure yeah i was First of all, I want to say I really appreciate the sequence that you used 
in introducing the mind map, then going to the mindful meditation, because it really worked for me. And the place that I was talk, uh, thinking about is a vacation. One of the first I took to Alaska, it was a backpacking expedition. So, and I, as I was going through the meditation, I almost started laughing because one of the things that I recalled, and I don't know how I forgot, were all the mosquitoes. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. It was like, yeah. And I do have a question. When you're trying to flesh out your story a little bit, do you fall back to the mind map and take smaller portions and try to do the mind map on the smaller parts? Well, well, I think what you can do, if you believe in the mind map is going to help you, it certainly helps me as a writer, a writing sort of long fiction, like 100,000 words plus. That's a lot of words, you know? So you, and it's also, a, it's the arc of a story. So, you know, you've got to be careful. You can go off into deep forests, which you lose your readers, you know? Now, what we're talking about isn't necessarily that sort of um, terrain. You know, it could be, you know, to do with a personal memory, which is what we're really into on this, this expressive uh, interaction. Um, but I would suggest taking what I've learned from my professional job into this. I would say, you know, re-mind map the smaller things. Don't go off at a tangent. Mind map it. And, and I think this would also help with, with what Maura was saying earlier as well. You know, when, you, when another idea comes, don't let the idea run you. Put down a mind map, even a small one at the bottom of the page, and just say, okay, so, so, so what do you want to tell me? You know, so I'm going here, and I'm going this holiday, and I'm going, and once you start, it, you know, there's a huge thing between what's in here and what's down on the piece of paper. That's why it's so important to use your hand and your fingers. And, and that will actually clarify things. That will actually. Great, thank you very much. No problem, no problem. And so your, your location again was? I'm north of San Francisco in California. The holiday location? Oh, uh, Alaska. Alaska, okay. In the winter or the summer? Summer. Yeah, the mosquitoes, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sebastian. Excuse me. Uh, the so the just looking through your slide, I came noted the idea of like not translating your uh, ideas where with the mind map um, based on my location. There was a I did have to translate because I had this kind of image of of my locations, but it was like how do I sketch this down fast without actually trying to get all the yeah 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 um, now, that's great it came so so strongly that's great it shows it was very vibrant i i yeah uh i guess it would, so that's why i kind of found that my i mean i i did stick like i actually started just drawing trying to draw sketches and but the, they sort of became symbols for what i actually was coming in coming in here um mm -hmm. And actually, I stopped. I actually stopped listening to you. I had to because because I was so. Well, we lost have to say in, in, myself in, and Sebastian spent what three hours this afternoon. Yeah, doing uh, and editing. So so we're probably you're probably quite wise to stop listening to me. Actually, <laughs> you're very good to turn up. You're very good to turn up now for more punishment. Oh, no, it's all right. Uh, it, well, no, just doing the expressive writing is punishing enough, and just seeing all your thoughts laid out and all the all the inner critic as well uh but yeah. um uh, well it, it's funny um probably some of the most interesting points actually on the expressive writing was stuff that got me distracted so i ended up just doing it the the 20 minutes very late last night and my phone just accidentally rang i didn't immediately pick it up but then i started immediately writing about Oh, I wonder what that Twitter, you know, Twitter notification is, or like, God, isn't it weird how like all available we all are to everyone of us around the world, and that kind of thing. So just kind of running with those thoughts, yeah. and then you ultimately just kind of finish them. I find. Um, I don't know about say Karen mentioned a thing tangent, whereas um, 
uh, I, I've, you know, it takes a couple of lines before, and maybe just because they're relatively well developed immediately. I'm not trying to say that in any flattering way. I just it's 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 a very straightforward when it comes to writing and so you know sometimes there's there's a bit of like oh, okay this you know the, a, a kind of deepening or, or something like that but um for yeah so that's kind of um i suppose some are you, are you like, saying that you know sometimes you can it, it can be too active intellectual in a way um Oh, it can be too Poss possibly like possibly but that just might be me um because i i'm not like um, I, I, I like with well with that example. I tried to sort of write down the kind of wonderment and amazement and, and the feeling of bafflement to the fact that like you know you just go to the phone and suddenly you've you're potentially reaching two two three hundred million. So yes, it was intellectual, but it was kind of it felt like exploring a kind of feeling a, a like why I would feel that kind of way towards. Uh, something or towards a thought maybe yeah well if you can reach two to three hundred million people i'm i'm very impressed with your social media skills <laughs> it's gotten really I good uh, but i uh, but it, i've only gotten to reach about twenty-eight thousand people this past 28 days but not to, not two to three hundred million no unfortunately okay. not <laughs> if only i could People, any any one of those two to three hundred million that are on Twitter could obviously potentially reach out to you, and they could be from all over the world. Or yeah. and then, isn't that kind of similar to having a public address? And isn't just thinking about like, oh, it's weird that how, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, I guess it comes from just the fact that you're seeing one or two people for the past two months, and it's like, oh, yeah, there's six billion other people who could somehow, somewhere, end up in front of your front door. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, that's one of the great things. But I suppose the other thing is, where was your, where was your location for your best uh, uh It was Venice. Ah, recently yeah. or in the past? Uh, last November, because um, it was the first time in a couple of years, well, I don't mind saying, because first time in a couple of years, all of our family went out abroad on, uh, country, uh, out of the country for a, ho a holiday. And we actually went to the the Venice Biennale. We tried to catch it. Yeah. And, um, so that was uh, had a slight significance for us in the family because my dad was an architect. So he would have gone. We've actually I've actually seen footage of him actually at a Biennale. Yes. Um, watching like an art or in an Irish pavilion. So and he was an and that's obviously a central event in the architectural world and art world. So it's kind of quite cool. And he always wanted to go to bring us to Venice. He always had a, quite an affection for Venice. Um, so it was, had this uh, slight meaning or... Yes. Um, but it, what, it was more trying to like, I, oddly enough, like trying to, do a lot of just like walkways or uh, just places or like, even not necessarily positive event, memories, but just moments that happened okay uh, we were coming to like for example a uh, favorite memory was when just i think we were all kind of frazzled after being in constant contact with each other for weeks, just constantly going and so i was trying to like draw the the location in the table so there was definitely like how to like trans mark it and remember it in a way yeah because, because yeah. you know, you, even if it's no good, you you could you know try your best to to get everything down, whereas yeah. you just can't, yeah. especially you, in the in, when you have you to like. To, you want to share with the group who your dad was, because he was uh, he was sure. Uh, you could his he was a an infamous architect called Sam Stevenson, um, and uh, he uh, d did a. a contentious two contentious buildings uh, one called the central bank now called the central plaza in dame street in dublin uh two and then the dublin city council um or ha one part of the dublin city council offices they never the, the actual his design never got built it got um altered by another architect's design uh but that that was a very contentious issue at the time so he was sort of a uh, a well-known architect in in Ireland and and or again infamous. Um, 
And uh, no, absolutely. I think I know someone on the street who went, who went on a demonstration against the wood key, actually. Okay, it yeah. The wood key. It was the wood key, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we were yeah you know, wood key, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My mother did too. <laughs> did you? <laughs> that, must have been, that must have had very interesting uh, supper time conversation. Um, yeah, I, 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 well, because, I mean, the, the, it was, a, I suppose, I don't know, actually. Well, it, like, it, it, for me, it was obviously a long time ago because I was born well before all that. Um, but, uh, and a lot of the people that did protest it, you know, were invited over to dinner and things like that when he was alive. And so it, it um, so I guess it's, yeah. They were or they weren't invited? Oh, they were, they were. Uh, okay. You know, so some, some that were known to uh, how object old you, publicly or how, protest or... How old were you at when Woodkey was built? Or were you alive? I wasn't alive. Okay. I was born in 91. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. Okay. <laughs> I know Anne remembers Woodkey. Um, okay, so that's very interesting. Well, look, you have a lot of stuff for that memory. Do you see how that can come up, you know, with your dad? And, and you know, that's a big yeah. deal. And that's very interesting. That's exciting. So, so what I would suggest, you know, what I would suggest to yourself more and to all of you is really is, is, is let the mind map discipline you to just go down one route because you can always come back and go down all the other rabbit holes. What it does is it gives you that one thing to actually concentrate on. And then, and then you know, you know, a paragraph or a story. Now, let's go back to the Sunday Independence story, for example. If you're interested in entering this, I'm going to give you the brief, okay? And this is a very interesting thing, and I'm going to give you a deadline. Those two things stop all of the madness of, you know, because remember, we have an eternal opportunity every time we open our eyes and think. You know, it can be any number of ideas. So what we so what's great about deadlines is that that's why it's called a deadline. If you don't get over, if you don't get in before the deadline, you're dead, literally. Uh, I, I've never missed the deadline, ever. And because you would not have a career in journalism if you miss a deadline um, or in anything else, come to think of it. So here is the deal. So I'm going to give you a very specific brief. You've got 200 words. You may think that's a lot. You may think that's a little. It's enough. Uh, ben did a piece last week. I think his connection dropped tonight. Uh, he's in the middle of the country. So sometimes he has a bad connection. He was on for a minute and then he went. But I, he did a piece and we'll share that, Emma, if we make a note to share that on the blog. So you can read it. We'll put up the PDF of my weekly column. So 200 words. Um, you know, and it's, you see the mind map I gave you? That's it. You just need to divide that into, you know, what's five into 200, 40 words. It's, it's quite simple if you break it down. If you don't break it down, it's a nightmare. Why is it a nightmare? It can go on forever. Oh, I could have gone here, or I could have done this. And then the deadline is, I need it by next, uh, next Friday. So, there you have it. You have 200 words. I need a picture as well of you in the venue. And, uh, and there's the structure. And we'll post Ben's and... Uh, you know, first drafts must be submitted by next Friday. How does that, does that feel fair enough? And do it for an exercise, if you so choose, because it's a great exercise. And uh, it's a great exercise. And you have nothing to lose. Emma, just before we end up for today, what was your take on the mind mapping and what, where did you end up going? Yeah, um, it's funny because I think two, I, two of you had the exact same experience where you go in thinking of one um, idea and then come out with a completely different idea. And that was just interesting to hear that more people went through that. But um, my idea was a trip in college that I took to Vancouver to do an improv festival. Um, and there were a lot of memories that came back to me. So it was cool doing that exercise. Um, I was thinking, is there ways to break this down into, um, 
I don't know if I'm going to be clear saying this, but it was hard for me to fully like, I guess, filter myself, which is some, an issue I think all of us are having of just like filtering. How do you mean filtering? Sounds like a craft beer. <laughs> exactly. No. Although there was some craft beers on that trip. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was more of just like picking a location. It was broad, Vancouver. But if I wanted to be more specific about it, we went to various locations in that one location. So if I am writing about this um, for the pitch, let's say, uh, the memory, uh, should I focus on like one yes. day I was always at the one. Camp. Always one. So for example, it always works, particularly in short form writing. You look at David Sedaris, look at any of those great, right? You pick one thing. So yeah. the image that stuck out. So I did my 200 stories about five weeks ago when I launched the, 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 the competition in the paper. I started off, I gave them, I gave them my pennies worth. So my pennies worth in 200 words was being broke. You have to say, this is how it was. This is the arc of my story. I was broke, penniless, worse than broke. I had a 12 year old son. I didn't live with him, but we, 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 we were close. And I uh, went and got a credit card. I don't know how I got it. It was 1994. And I booked the two of us to go to New York. We'd never been there before. <laughs> to see Ireland play in the World Cup, which was off the scale in Ireland, because Ireland had beaten Italy in the first match, who became the finalists. You know, the whole country ground to a halt, if anybody was old enough to remember that. And I just did this crazy thing. And his mother said, you know, you're so irresponsible. You know, you're so irresponsible. And I said, yeah. But, you know, and then I can remember get, taking him there. And then I can remember we got to the giant stadium with all these other mad Irish people. And I can just remember we got there early and I can just remember this image of him sitting in the giant stadium on his own, little, little boy, basically. And just, and it gives me goosebumps when I even look back and just think of the image of him on his own with these Irish flags all around. And yeah. I could just see he was almost, you know, radiating joy. He was like, joy. And, and that was, you know, and I knew it was the right thing to do. And I knew it was, you know, we still talk about it and it was the right thing to do. Even it took me like four years to pay off the debt or whatever, didn't matter. So you see, you pick one thing. That's where the mind map will help you. It's like said with your story, maybe something to do with a memory, you know, it, it doesn't have to be about your dad. It, it may be even something completely random. Maura, when you're going to your, all of your different ones, you know, one is that you only have one to hook the person, which, and it also is something from the heart. So, it, you know, people will get it. You know, I'm sure as you heard that story, you got the feeling that I had. You know, that, and all you're trying to do is share that. It doesn't have to be a long, nobody's interested. You know, as, as, a, as a writer, of, you know, and a journalist for 30 years, nobody cares, you know, with long detail. They just want to be grabbed, punched in the nose, emotionally, and let off. That's it. Yeah. That's all you have to do. And you have 200 words to do it. It could be the first time you fell in love, the first time you made love, the first time you went totally wrong on a beach somewhere. People love, they love the great things like, you know, bonding with a family member or the things you went disastrously wrong. Both <laughs> are valid. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's really helpful. You know, and, and just stick. And I say, that's, and really, I'd, I'd share this, you know, with more and Sam. Get that one hook. And just, and if this exercise, you have 200 words, you have to do it. You know, and as an editor, I'd be saying to you, if you were working in our office, I'd be saying, do it. That's a job. Yeah. Find one, 200 words is enough. It's very short. 200 words is two paragraphs. It's very short. That's a skill. Okay, well, listen, I enjoyed that. I don't know. Um, Emma, you better, we better wrap up because we've gone over time. Yeah, we're a little over time. I definitely enjoyed that as well. i um, just going to share my screen again to share with you what's to come next week. Um, and we're going to be, we kind of mentioned it already, but we're going to be looking at how drawing can be applicable and a useful tool into your writing process. Um, so we're going to be working another session in there. 
uh, another exercise and look at how useful drawing is. Um, and then just a reminder, as always, uh, we have our YouTube channel and website where all of these sessions are available, whether you want to look back or catch up, it's available to you, as well as um, our meditation exercises up there as well. And finally, just putting this up there, I know we talk about it every session, so just wanted to put it up there. And for those of you who don't know, um, uh, Kevin and I just love doing this because, I mean, it's such a great tool and useful session, um, but if you do find it of value and did want to donate, we do have a link to donate to uh, the Order of Malta Knights Run, which is a charity that helps um, aid the homeless in Dublin. So that link is up there as well. Um, and thank you all. Oops. We'll go back. Thank you all so much for joining in and we will see you next week. And and do do take that do do have a bash at doing the story, you know, whether it's published or not or whatever. Um, show of hands, who who's gonna have a go at the story? Two hundred words. Yeah, I think I'll great. Great. Well, if we can all get there, if I mean we can craft them. I think it's gonna be exciting. So I'm looking forward to seeing them next week. We probably won't have the time to hear everyone. I don't know. Well, I'll talk to Emma about that. Um, you may not want to read them out initially, but we, we'll talk about that, and I'll see you all next week. Definitely. All right, bye, everyone. Thanks, Kay. Thanks, Emma.